simple question. Just introduce yourself. Um, just your name and your job title, and uh, you know, let's start with that. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Hans Frü, and I'm the founder of this company FNP Robotics. It's a young company. It's only three years, but it is a following company of an earlier startup of the uh, University of Zurich uh, Artificial Intelligence Lab. And uh, we did from the beginning focus on collaborative robotics and we have now started to go more and more to really personal robotics, personal service robotics and uh, have manipulator helping people in their daily life. Now what kind of um commercial applications or markets have you had some interest in or success in or mm. where do you see potential for your mm. business? So we are already successfully in the collaborative industrial market where we have applications for uh, food uh, packaging, food handling, food preparation and uh, we have also applications in service robotics uh, this is quite new, but uh, big projects uh, in elderly care. Yeah, okay. Elderly care um, is quite a complex area for robotics in terms That's of true. what they can do. There are so many uh, complicated things to do for elderly people, but it's a very big area that where robotics companies want mm. to help. Yeah. Um, and I've seen some examples of robots uh, in Japan, especially because they have a growing mm -hmm. elderly population. Um, these don't look like, these robots that I can see, don't look like the type of robots that I've seen about Japan. I mean, when you say elderly care, what, what kind yes. of things can they do? Or can your so, robots do? Uh, the topic is that uh, these humanoid robots, which you have in mind, they are mostly not very skilled in terms of manipulating things. They are more for communication. And we do robot arms who can uh, really uh, manipulate things, uh, surf uh, objects and uh, clean desks and so on. And this is uh, different and it is more skilled, which means it needs more intelligence than just to talk uh, with uh, the patients or bring them something on uh, a tablet uh, and do nothing more. And that's the, that's the difference. We are from manipulating and uh, having skills. Uh, and this allows to do more things. So we have about 35 uh, tasks defined, which, do for, uh, which we do for elderly people. Now, the, these uh, elderly people's market that you are talking about, are they mostly in Switzerland? Or, or where are you? Uh... No, uh, we have uh, projects in Switzerland, but also in China. Yeah, and, and the uh, new ones are coming in other countries, but uh, Switzerland and China are for the elderly care uh, topic now uh, good markets for us. Okay, now um, you being a founder of a company is mm -hmm. quite interesting uh, for me to talk to because, and I don't want you to maybe help too much, uh, give too much help to your competitors. <laughs> But what challenges have you faced as a, as a startup or what kind of things uh, have, have worked well for you um, from the beginning? Okay, I mean, as I said, we are not the first uh, company I founded in this uh, field of uh, collaborative robotics. The first uh, was called uh, Neuronics Free and Partner and this was uh, founded already in 1996. And that, uh, as you say, it's not always uh, easy. And that uh, was uh, experiencing, experiencing uh, unfriendly takeover. And in uh, the following, I left that company. And so when that one went then down, five years later, I came back and uh, did restart with a totally new product line, as we have this P-Rob here. And P stands for personal. And uh, so we could uh, really rise up the company really s uh, fast. Now, um, collaborative robot market is actually potentially huge. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? And what, what do you think of the collaborative robots market uh, uh, going forward over the next year, few years? Uh, so it's really a mix. On the one hand, it is a big market uh, to come in the future. On, on the other side, we have a 
phenomena that at the moment uh, real collaborative robotics in industry are not that many around. It's, it's more also universal robot. It's not collaboration often, it's just have a flexible lightweight robots among people. But to really make handshaking, that is uh, just in the start. And I think there we have some challenges. We have to be more personal, we have to be uh, better connecting and to show that it is more efficient, uh, so it pays back. And that's uh, one thing we try to do. For example, being more efficient, this does not mean only speed, because you are limited with the speed if you work with humans, but you can enhance, for example, the efficiency by loading 20 yogurts at a time instead of one. And so there you have to redesign the task, redefine the tasks. Now sometimes I get the feeling that a lot of the robotics companies are they're like research projects rather mm -hmm. than commercial yes. enterprises. Yeah. Um, it's understandable because it's, you know a lot of it is larger, uh, largely new areas mm -hmm. uh, of, of you know. So, but um, where do you think the balance? You know, at the moment. How is it balanced uh, in terms of how mm -hmm. much is research, how much is genuine commercial enterprise, for, mm -hmm. especially for new products like mm -hmm. this? Um, yes, uh, it is somehow a mix in the new markets. I mean, if there is a market not fully developed, you cannot expect to have uh, just commercial products for it. The first products for a new market are always sort of prototyping, uh, exploring. And that's what happens here. But uh, so uh, we have robots which are working every day in industry. That's uh, nice and that works uh, and shows that collaborative robotics is already developed. But in the service robotic market where we go to elderly homes, where we uh, go to uh, restoration, there you often have some uh, mix. And I think that's okay. It takes uh, quite some years and maybe decades to establish, but it is going to a new world and it's very nice to be part of that. Um, probably final question. Um, connectivity is a very big issue at the moment. Mm -hmm. Everybody is talking about IoT, Industry yeah, 4, so. uh, all this kind of software oriented mm -hmm. uh, business plans are becoming really important. Um, what do you think of that trend and uh, how, is, how does it affect uh, your business? That's a very big trend and it's not at all rel related to robots only. This is happening at all automation uh, areas. It's also happening in the normal uh, devices you have at home. And so everything gets interconnected. The Internet of Things is expected to become larger than the Internet uh, of humans. And that's uh, so such a big trend, we can not stop it and even not imagine what will come. And uh, uh, yeah, what, 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 uh, how, how does it affect or relate to your business, your robots? Are they connectable? Can they be networked? And they are fully connectable. We have uh, a web browser interface. We have web services, uh, we can communicate uh, through different channels with uh, objects. We can, for example, communicate through RFID. We have camera, we have uh, the possibility to overlay the vision uh, objects with uh, step files, 3D, and know much more about, about a realized uh, object in the space. So we are fully on that yeah, way. Uh, they, do you use open standards? I've heard of things like OPC or something. We, we support ROS, that's a, the open source robotic operation system. Uh, and uh, we support the web services protocol. Uh, but we, we, our uh, software interface is uh, written in Java and HM, HTML5. Yeah, so like web browser language. Great, thank you. Um, I can't think of any more questions. I probably can, yeah. but uh, yeah, I don't want to yeah, take too sure. much of your time. But uh, is there something important that I should have asked and you want to say, you know, feel free to uh, say that. Okay. Uh, the, where is the 
robot uh, going in the future it's going more and more to the people uh, in the everybody's uh, homes uh, it will become more colleagues and friends and the big question is what is about the humans what is the future of the humans and uh, so my opinion is we have not to redefine us uh, in terms of what kind of work are we doing so but more in what kind of meaningful activities are we performing every day whether it's work or at home or uh, on vacation and I think this this will change and maybe it's for the good yeah it's a, it's a fantastic uh, question I didn't ask that of other people mm -hmm. because it's too philosophical yeah, a little it's bit a business, philosophical, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a business I trade a show so I don't want to <laughs> Um, I have a background in natural sciences and uh, okay. uh, well, brain uh, research. That's maybe uh, why I'm a little bit uh, also asking myself these kind of questions. But it's interesting. Yeah, feel free to maybe elaborate for a sentence or two because I, I want to know what, uh, because you're a roboticist, you're very involved in the technology. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is, uh, is different from robot, uh, there between robots and uh, humans? What, I what is it? that humans can do that robots can't do now and may never be able to do mm -hmm. what is it mm -hmm. what is okay. the essence of human beings basically <laughs> <laughs> that's even more philosophical <laughs> but my answer there would be first there are huge differences but I would not agree that there won't be a point in the future where the robots cannot do that it's not possible maybe for the next 50 years but later I would not trust that they cannot have consciousness, for example, that they cannot have feelings, real feelings, based on sensory uh, uh, and uh, conscious uh, reinforcement. And I could not trust that they could not have empathy even. So I think uh, the difference at the moment is mainly the self-reflection, which you know have only uh, humans and very few animals available and there we are far from and the second is of course the uh, evolutionary process which brought humans here did optimize them for living in this environment and robots have to be teached for most of the things uh, and it's hard for them to work in a human environment yeah, definitely. That's an area mm. where I could ask you lots and lots of questions. <laughs> I've already, uh, but I'm sure um, I'll be in. I'll stay in touch, and we can uh, maybe do another longer interview because, uh, okay, you know, my next question. I, I, I've stopped myself asking you, but uh, you know, consciousness. That's you. You really. Um, you're saying that robots and artificial intelligence at some point will be capable of mimicking consciousness is you know possibly even become conscious I am sure they will become conscious because uh, what this consciousness in principle it's it's a continuum uh, to be a little bit conscious you can also find that for even low animals so they have uh, attentive they uh, ref uh, they recognize the environment and also even the, the ratios in the environment the, uh, but they are not able to think about uh, the universe and God and themselves uh, but this is uh, a step you have to take uh, and it's based on the lower levels but certainly there uh, is uh, in humans there was a some uh, maybe 100,000 years ago a big uh, change that we opened our mind for this but I think it's a gradual process and once you are at a higher level that may happen also that is fascinating. I really appreciate your time, and I'd, I'm going to stop myself from uh, asking <laughs> you too many questions. I'm sure you you got other things.